So think of it like this, right? If we take that simple move again, P is pushing into the move, that's the green, and then D is pushing away, right? Now D yeah. is not the mirror opposite of P or else they'd cancel out. We know that because also D is the slope of the gyro. But you can think of the D term as a little bit like a break. And then the end result is this curve called the PID sum. And notice what it really is, the purple trace, the PID sum, is a kind of tempered version of the push. So the, the PID sum is still pushing in the direction it has to, or else you wouldn't move, it wouldn't rotate. So it's pushing, but it's being tempered by this D, D signal pushing in the other direction, right? Mm -hmm. In essence, what you're doing when you're PID tuning is you're sculpting that PID sum. You're sculpting mm -hmm. it. Like you're, like you're trying to get the shape of that PID sum just so that the set point and the gyro are very close together and they run up parallel and the gyro doesn't overshoot. So it has to back off at just the right moment, right? You see P is continuing here, whereas the PID sum is backing off a little sooner. It's backing off sooner because it's being tempered by that D term, right? This is why when you add too much I term, what it does, I term is also pushing in the direction of the move. So I term is gonna be something like this, and it's, it's gonna go past the P. And what that's gonna do, because it sums with the P, it's gonna make the PID sum shape come out here a bit. And when that goes out there, it's going to cause the gyro to continue here too long. See that? And then it comes back down. So that's what happens when you have too much I term. And mm -hmm. you'll see that in the step response because but sometimes you'll get overshoot in a step response. They don't realize that it's actually being driven by I term. And then adding D just tends to make it worse. Whereas if you start to increase the master and you collapse the error, you don't have that problem.